Hello there, friend. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to my little YouTube channel. Um, I am Sheena. I'm the independent yarn dyer behind Casual Fashion Queen, which I have been crocheting and dyeing yarn under for about 12 or 13 years now, which, uh, wow. <laughs> I usually don't include the period before I dyed yarn when I'm talking about my business. So yeah, for years I actually crocheted hats and little jellyfish and different things and sold them on Etsy under the same name. So it has been a long time since I really have been posting on YouTube quite regularly. Uh, earlier in the year, I found out that I had been born with a issue with my kidneys and uh, kind of was just beating myself up all the time, even though I was in chronic pain, blaming myself, etc. So it has been a interesting year. Um, I didn't craft very much for quite a long period of time after being sick. I was just so fatigued. I couldn't, it was just useless trying. It, it really was. Um, I actually feel very, very healthy now. It is really, really nice that I have been able to stay up past like 6 or 7 p.m. <laughs> um, those little simple things that you don't think about until suddenly you're just so tired. So first up, I want to show you my crochet blanket. This is the blanket that I started four or five years ago. Honestly, it's been so, so, so long. It has traveled with me. It has moved with me. I'm just folding it up a little bit. Um, I used various minis throughout and then I use the alpaca and silk for every other row. It kind of lightened it up a little bit because it is a lace weight compared to the fingering weight that's in there. And then I just used a white fingering weight yarn as well to do edging. I did a more scalloped edge and then I did these little pointy edges on the bottom that may or may not be visible how I'm holding this, but I'm doing my best. So I finished this. I'm not sure when I finished this, honestly. It's been a couple, maybe two months. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I ended up kind of landing on this size that is a perfect lap blanket on the couch for two people side by side. Or for me, I'm a little over five foot. I can lay down and cover myself to my neck. I love it. It is perfect. It, you know, perfect for laying on the couch. It perfectly covers me lengthwise. It's not huge, but it's manageable. And I feel like a little easier to manage than something larger. If you did want to have a little more mobile blanket size, I should measure this at some point and see where I landed at because I feel like this is the size of a blanket I would make again. I don't see myself making a king size blanket. I'm just not something for me personally. So yeah, I love this. It is super warm. It's so sweet. I love just seeing it. It makes me happy. It looks like a little box of candies or something, like a little candy shop treat, even though it's all furry and you don't want to eat it, but yeah. So this is the first thing that I wanted to show you. Now I'm just gonna set it there and grab, I guess, this pair of socks, which is the only pair of socks I have finished this entire year. Well, no, I finished a pair of Satsuki May DK weight socks in January or February. But this is my first sock weight socks that I did this year. And this is in my colorway, the Heron. This color was just released a week ago and I love these. I haven't worn them yet other than to try on the first one. Of course, I mean, you have to try it on, 
but I haven't like walked around or wore them. They're, they're just perfect. I did an extra long leg here just because it is cold. I am keeping it real. I want to be warm. So I do like to have a full leg um, for this. I use it, I want to say a 2.5 millimeter needle that Hattie's 10 inch. I cast on 60. I knit two purl two for about 25 rows. Stocking at desired length, heel flap and gusset, stocking at the foot. And then I did a wedge decrease for the toe. And yeah, I couldn't be more pleased with how these pulled. I know they will, this yarn will pull differently probably if I cast on another sock because our tension changes and just the littlest things can change how a yarn works up, which is kind of awesome in a bizarre way. Uh, I also did a little granny square sample as well because quite different looking between the two. I finished my snowfall sweater wrap. This is in a non superwash highland wool, very, very rustic base. It measures in around nine feet long. It's meant to wrap around me, but uh, unless you want to sit here and watch me for a long, long time, we're not going to do that. It is great as like a little hooded scarf, super, super warm. This is fantastic for my cold weather. But yeah, I love this as like a backup way. I feel like this is a really good piece. As you can see here, it has sleeves. It can be used as a scarf layering. I feel like anyone in my house could grab this, wrap it around and head outside, grab the mail, feed the chickens, whatever they're headed out to do. Um, I really, really like this. The non superwash gives it such a shield effect. It's so, so warm. I did order the wrong yarn when I got this. I ended up having to swatch because I had only sock weight. Um, my first first swatch, I held two together. Second swatch, I held three together. Opted for the three strands held together. Love it. The fabric was just so like dense and squishy and exactly what I wanted out of this. I couldn't be happier with how it ended up. I love the size. I love the fit when I do have it wrapped around my shoulders. And I feel like I will be able to actually get like work done around the house while wearing this. Before I transition from finished items to what's currently on the needles, I want to show you something that I finished two years ago and decided, hey, let's pull it out and work on it again. So I, if you see here, obviously there's a very, very orange strand of yarn running through. Um, yeah. When I first finished this, the neckline was different. It was longer, it was floppier. When I would wear it, I felt like it would kind of ride up my shoulders and into my neck. And I really don't like things pushing on my neck. It is, it's a thing. Um, so I, pulled it down, double hem, and I just used a crochet hook to close it up. To me, definitely the simplest to do and the simplest to remove if I didn't like it. I also chose the orange so that it was pretty obvious and I didn't end up like messing it up, pulling it out or something. I definitely see myself putting this in permanently. I need to see if I have more of the Halcyon colorway. Um, but this here is the snow crocus. This was knit in DK weight. I'm not sure if that's what the pattern called for because I tend to use DK weight, my DK weight for worsted and DK weight patterns as well. I know, ridiculous. And this is the house coat that I cast on. No pattern, I'm kind of just doing my own thing. It's just kind of big and lumpy and bumpy and kind of hard to really show. <laughs> but I started at the bottom, working my way up. I did a 
double hem on the bottom just to add a little bit of weight a little side seam action here where it is staggered front and back for the length um, I'm kind of modeling this on my house robe I know that sounds really really extra maybe but um, I basically wanted a wool house robe I also wanted something that was long but not as long as my robe because I work on the first floor and the second floor of my house so I'm always back and forth and I'm always carrying things up and down the stairs so I can't hold on to my robe I can't you know save myself if I start falling maybe it's better if I just don't have something so long on my legs and so back of this I want to hit like the back of my knee the front will be a little bit up my thigh a bit so I feel like this is pretty good coverage. Um, it will also tie, I'm sorry chair. It'll also tie both sides, I'm hoping, just so that it stays in place because I, I knit both panels on both sides, the same size. They're basically, I mean, it's a, it's a robe. It's a wool robe. I need to admit it and stop calling it a house coat. And um, yeah, so. It's going to be a long-term project. I figured this is my new blanket that I'm working on. It's not going to be finished anytime soon. Um, it takes so long to do a row right now. It's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. It's just something I pick up and down. I'll probably do a row or two a day. It will eventually be made. We will see. Hopefully my passion for this comes back. I was kind of really like on it at first, but recently my heart, my heart, my heart. I challenge you deep dive into your mountain of projects and pull out the most beautiful thing you can find. That's what I did. This is a project that for me historically had a lot of things attached to it and I feel like maybe I needed to work those through those things before I was able to pick this up again. Does that sound ridiculous? I hope so. <laughs> but for real, I think I really did. I needed to work through some things to face this project again because sadly I was not that far off from where I was. Um, I actually have a visual. On this side here, I had finished the first white stripe and had the sec the purple one and was set up for the second one when I started this back up. And I've tried to start this up again, and this has come up and down, up and down. I always look at it and say, how do I do that? <laughs> How do I do this? I can't do this. I know I did it a hundred million times already, but obviously I can't do this. And that's something that I had to work through because I obviously can do this. I did it for a long time. And to, today, I know when I sit down, I obviously can do this because I've been doing this and I can't stop doing this. I love it. I love this pattern so much. So this is Sizz. It is by Leslie Ann Robinson, which on like Instagram, she goes as Knit Graffiti. The pattern, when it was first designed, it did use this color in it right here. This is Bohemia. So this became my Terrestria Fade collection. Inner piece, stained glass, Bohemia, inner world, and then other world is at the end here, which is like a more blue. And I will flip it over so you can see the other side because obviously stained glass on the back here, Bohemia on the back here, inner world on the back here, other world is on the back here and then back to 
inner peace. So yeah, it's been fun working on this. It's fun to flip it over and see the different patterns and the different colorings. It's just one of those patterns that maybe look a little more intimidating than it should. Um, <laughs> it's very intuitive. I can pick this up and down. I hate that I didn't work on this for a long time, but I'm also okay with that because maybe I needed it right now because it is literally exactly what I need. I work on it morning, noon, and night. I work on it in the dark by Christmas lights in the morning and I finish it by mushroom lights in my bedroom at night and I just can't get enough. I keep falling asleep with it on top of me. It's been really, really nice to reminisce. Aside from knitting and crocheting and making all of these beautiful things that I just showed you, um, my main focus really is dyeing yarn. I wake up every morning, five days a week, and I start my dye pots up. I usually am dyeing well until after the sun has set now because the sun sets so incredibly early now. I am looking forward to the winter solstice and the days getting longer afterwards i feel like it is so hard to squeeze all of my work in during the daylight hours it definitely has been a very very different winter than we have had here everyone we have spoken to has just been surprised and alarmed by the complete lack of snow and by how warm it has been. It is quite unusual to be heading into the Christmas season and most of the snow has melted off of the ground. Of course, I tend to be a little bit of a weather nerd, so I find watching how El Nino affects this particular area to be really interesting. I think that if you're into nature and animals and trees and flowers, I think you kind of have to be into the weather as well. It kind of just is happening and existing with us and definitely where I live can really, really affect you very, very randomly. I guess that's part of why I spend a lot of my winter at home, just diligently working, dyeing lots and lots of yarn, getting in many, many stitches, crocheting away. Hopefully this winter I can try extracting my own pigments, maybe get back into sewing, and I have a lot of dreams, and I hope that you will be joining me for them. I will talk to you soon. Thank you for hanging out with me. Make sure to like and comment below. Thank you.